See how I installed ESP Home Voice Assistant software on this SpotBear Voice Assistant device. Hi, I'm Larry, the Impatient Maker. Today we're going to look at these little guys. Uh, they're... Uh, test. <laughs> how exciting. <laughs> what are we testing today, apart from my endless charm, of course. Well, I was not expecting that, but these are the Xiaoji Voice Assistants, and I'm going to show you how to put the Xiaoji ESP Home software on it. Stay tuned. So if you don't already know, this is a Spot Bear, what does it say? DeepSeek AI Voice Robot Ball ESP32 S3, blah, 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 with the LCD. Uh, and it's meant to work with DeepSeek AI and that kind of thing. The key is the ESP32 S3, which is actually a better chip than the one I used in my Build Your Own Voice Assistant. So these things are not very much money, 30 bucks or so, depending on if you get battery or touchscreen. And they're pretty fun. Uh, and they, when you first turn it on, it has a QR code, so you can log into DeepSeek and all that stuff. So a really clever guy named Thomas Beck ported the ESP Home Voice Assistant software over to this device and did a great job. It's really good code. It's very modular, especially the new stuff. And it's a lot of fun. So I bought one, and there you can get them on AliExpress. I'll have a link below. And there's also a link on his GitHub page. He deserves all the credit. I just... Struggle a little bit with the instructions, so I thought I'd make my own video now that I figured it out. Okay, this is the uh, V2 spot pair ball, and uh, you can just tell from looking at it. Um, let's see, I'm used to doing it this way. So, this is the power button because uh, it's not really clear on all the diagrams which one. So, you plug it in to your computer, and then you hit this button back here on the you know, which I just showed you. And that turns it on. I've already installed the software, but this is how I did it. So just plug it in, and it'll say something about QR code and log into the Chinese AI, which you can if you want. But I didn't bother, and I just went to the ESP Home Web to install the software. So installing ESP Home on one of these Xiaoji guys is pretty much like installing on any other ESP32. Uh, with one exception. So, well, the exception is really because of the Xiaoji ESP Home software we're about to put on it. Because it's pretty honking big and uh, needs to make, I guess, repartition something to make room for all that code. And so, you know, when you first install ESP Home, you install a minimal that does nothing except it knows how to update over the air and render a web page. Usually after that, you can upgrade wirelessly like to do the real thing uh, in this case you need to install over USB one more time the full ESP Home Xiaozi software um, and if you don't run Home Assistant on the machine that this is connected to which is my case I run Home Assistant in a Lenovo uh, and I'm not sponsored um, server in the closet and this is my laptop so you have to do it's basically a manual install from the ESP Home Builder. So it compiles the firmware and server, and then you download that binary file to the target laptop, and then use the ESP Home Web software to uh, flash this over USB. After you do that, then you can upgrade over wireless. So I'm going to run through that and show you how it's done. Okay, so here's the ESP Home Builder, and as you can see, I have quite a few, but I'm just going to go and run through how you would do this. You click New Device and open ESP Home Web. This is, this is pretty normal. Connect, uh, and if it says No Devices, make sure, make sure your device is on. So now that I've turned it on, it shows up. And you connect. Prepare for first time use install and congratulations um, you might not be able to do the Wi-Fi um, don't worry about that uh, if you can't do the Wi-Fi actually that doesn't matter because we're not going to use it right away because we have to use USB to install so now we go back um, I've already done this so this is actually the no touchy because I don't have touch screen on this one but normally you would see uh, you to adopt uh, and I have other videos that show that. So you need to adopt it, and then once you adopt it, um, 
then you want to install the actual software. So we'll do edit uh, once it's adopted and then it will have almost nothing here. And so what you want to notice is this name here, this name at the top. That ne Oops, don't do what I did. It needs to stay the same. You can call the friendly name whatever you want. Then you come over to Real Deco and you go to the code, which is at the top. Devices. Okay, and this is the spot pair ball. I keep wanting to call it spot bear. And it's the ball two is what I have. And you can tell from looking at the back, um, you know, mine looks like this and the buttons are on the side. And the old ones don't have the I guess, uh, SD card. Okay, then spot two, the YAML. And you want to copy it. Just copy that. Or, oops, go back to your editor. And what I do is um, go down here, just pretend none of that was there, and then just pop it in, uh, and then get rid of this, these first two lines here, so because they're duplicates. And then this red underline should go away, hopefully, eventually. Might take a few. Um, okay, and then the other thing you want to do is uh, look for, oh right, here we go, image model. It's right at the top. I'm gonna look for the image model and change it to whatever you want. These are your options. Um, Dory is like the cute fish. There's Eve. Um, HA character is not my favorite. Um, I actually like Sean the Sheep. So I'm gonna change it to Sean the Sheep. Okay, and uh, and just say install, and then do manual download. And so it'll compile, and it'll take a long time. So I'm gonna ff. Okay, it finished, which is great. So now we want to download it. So I want to use the modern or factory format. Click that, and then it should give you a download link and there you go now you got your file and oh yeah might have to chrome might say oh it's dangerous just sit keep because uh, it's not dangerous all right okay now that it's installed um, you want to go to settings oh I should be recording the screen okay once it's installed you need to do a little bit of install config here to so go to settings devices ESP Home, now click the top part here, not, not the 15 devices. And then go find your device. Mine is called New Touchy. You want to click the gear and allow this device to perform uh, Home Assistant actions. And if you want, you could also subscribe to the logs. If you're going to hack it, I would definitely do that. But if you're just going to use it, probably don't need to. Hey, okay, submit that. And then now you can go into Edit. Give it a name if you like. I already have one. And then if you click the bottom thing here, you'll get into the control screen and you can set the speaker volume and you probably will have to set it because I think it's really quiet at first. Um, and then you can tell it, set all these switches, like um, how do you, oh, this is where you set up like, who's gonna listen, who's gonna talk, that kind of stuff. And that's the same for any voice assistant and I'm not gonna cover it here. Uh, change, choose your clock format, um, all that stuff. Lots of switches here. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, have a ball. Okay, so it's working. Um, so, like I said, this is the okay. power button is, if you're looking at it, it's on the right. So the left button will activate it, because unless you have a touch screen. What time is it? Oh, it's very quiet, that's why. So let's change that volume. What time is it? Thanks. So you'll have to find your sweet spot. Okay, that's, uh, that pretty much wraps this up. Any questions, let me know in the comments. Please click like and subscribe, and hope you enjoyed this video.